are live. Hey, John, what's going on? Um, hey, how's it going? Good, man. So just for everybody out there in the audience, I am with John. I don't want to ruin Mac it. Tange. John is Mac fine. Tange, right? Yeah, that works. Awesome. Awesome. What, what kind of name is that? I'm from the Well, my parents are from the Philippines, but I'm a big mutt, so. <laughs> Same as me. <laughs> I got German, Polish, Scotch. I actually well, found out I did the uh, I did the uh, was it the twenty three and Me or whatever that thing is. Yeah. Found out I actually have a Malinasian, believe it or not, Malinasian. I didn't even know what it was. I checked it out and I was like, I looked them up. I'm like, of course, they're gorgeous people. Of course, I got some of that in me. <laughs> anyway, uh, background on who you are, what you have going on. I know you're a Delray local. You've been here forever. I believe you're in the insurance business, and then you decided to open up this concept because you were in California and you fell in love with it. Anyway, take the floor. So yeah, my name's John. I'm a owner operator of Opportunities. The way I like to explain us, we're like a modern beer hall. Um, and we opened, we had our grand opening back in February, um, soft opening November. Um, but essentially we are a bar. Um, so we're self-serve beer and wine bar, mostly craft beer, local craft beer. Um, who have obviously been affected tremendously by this virus in the closing. So I've been talking to John throughout the entire day, all just kind of giving him up to date. So where we're at, I've been kind of, I think I've been operating under John's credo and motto or living your, your, you have to adapt attitude throughout this whole deal. Um, but I've been kind of over the last couple of weeks, I've been kind of keeping tabs with him, letting him know where we're at as far as opening and what we could do to open outside of, whatever county city governor order so um let's i guess get into the news today because it's pretty fluid and it's happening pretty quickly but i knew you were on the phone with palm beach county all morning Not today yet. and it was kind of frustrating i guess because you couldn't get a straight answer from anybody and they were kind of giving you the the circle jerk if you know what i mean yeah no for sure um so essentially what, what's gone is yesterday the state um, actually, before, let me backtrack that. Yesterday afternoon, um, I just want to give a quick shout out to to Ryan Boylston, uh, the mayor and the rest of the commissioners, because they signed an executive order that will allow bars to operate at some level with a couple tweaks. We'll, we'll get into that in a sec. So, you know, there is some light at the end of the tunnel for at least uh, bars in, in the county, uh, regardless of what the county decides. But the governor decided yesterday, there's been a lot of back and forth. I've been talking to John about it um, on a time frame. Over the last couple of weeks, I, I've heard from the state that it was going to be weeks to months to days of when bars would be open. And then finally, I guess the governor pulled the trigger yesterday, um, amended his executive order and is allowing bars to open up during stage two. Now, obviously, since Dade, Broward and Palm Beach are kind of like the redheaded stepchildren of Florida, um, we kind of operate differently. Um, I've learned throughout this process that counties and municipalities can never be less strict in the state, but they can always be more strict. Um, and that's kind of what we have going on right now. Dade nipped it in the butt, I think yesterday, within an hour of the governor's order, they said, um, no, bars are not opening up in Dade. Haven't heard anything about Broward yet. Um, I know Palm Beach, I think 30 minutes ago, um, decided to release something saying um, bars are not allowed to open at 50% capacity in Palm Beach. Um, I called this morning, I called, I think I started with the emergency, Palm Beach emergency centers. They didn't even know that the governor um, passed an order, but I'm sure that's just whoever I was talking to on the phone. Um, so I called the administrator. The administrator said, let me see how that affects you guys. They would get back to us. And then the mayor's office was just, I don't know, they felt, Palm Beach mayor's office kind of felt like annoyed that I even called them. So um, they kind of uh, redirected me back to uh, Palm Beach emergency, um, letting me know. I pressed them a little bit. And they said, well, let me get with my team. I guess they're gonna redirect the answers. But as of this minute, bars cannot open um, in the state of Florida, with one caveat. Well, that's state of Florida, Palm Beach County, Palm Beach County, right? Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward. Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward. Yeah, I'm looking at the article right now, and it's, you know, I, I, we were part of the county commission meeting where they basically broke up phase two into like four different parts. And I remember the bars, arcades, billiards halls, hookah, cigar, and other smoking bars and lounges uh, will be allowed to reopen with reduced capacity in the final increment of their plan. So we still, according to what the county commission put into place, We've got like three more phases before we get to the phase that basically 
the whole rest of the state is green lighted right now. And to your point, absolutely. That was one of the takeaways I had. You know, I was hoping maybe the county would be more aggressive so that, like, like you said, you can be you can be less aggressive than the state, but you can't be more aggressive to the state. So the state basically gives you the baseline of what you're allowed to do. Um, so yeah, no official date has been set on when bars in Palm Beach County will be allowed to reopen for the on-premises consumption of alcohol. Bars in Martin, St. Lucie, Indian River, and Okeechobee counties all have the green light to reopen on Monday. So, uh, you know, Halsey Balshears did his job and once again, it seems like the county is smacking it down um, and, and uh, we're going to pay the price for that. Yeah, essentially, it, it's just uh, it's tough because, like I said, I feel as though there's been a lot of us in the industry that have like immediately when this happened, spent thousands of dollars retrofitting bars to operate responsibly, putting responsibly and putting standard operating procedures in place. Like I did this within the first 60 days. Um, here we are six going on seven months later you know, still waiting for a shot to operate responsibly where there are other play bad actors, we'll say, that aren't operating as responsibly, but are still able to make a living. Um, but yeah, there there is, um, like I said, there is some light in the tunnel um, because uh, of the city and what the city did yesterday. So and let, me, let me just interrupt you there for a second, if I may, because are you saying that the city can actually overrule what the county's doing? No. So essentially what has happened was bars and breweries, the state is allowed um, um, bars and breweries to operate as long as they have some sort of food functionality, a food license and they're serving food. So even though they're a bar, but they're still kind of operating like a restaurant and a bar. Um, and that happened sometime in July um, where they, they amended the order because at first it was 50, you gotta be 50% food, right? right? Then they amended the order to say, all you have to do is have a food license and serve food. So you saw a lot of Copper Point Brewery in Boynton. They, were, they, they purchased part of a food truck, have that food truck on site, they have a food license in their name, boom, they can open and operate. Um, and, so you're and, saying they went in and, and partnered with a food truck. They didn't even buy a food truck. They partnered with a food they, truck they and that gave it. them by grandfathering or by osmosis, basically by partnering up, that gave them a license that was attached to the brewery? Yes. Essentially, since the brewery bought part of the food truck, the food truck amended their food license to include the brewery's name on it. And therefore now the, the brewery has a food license. That's We're interesting. Doing, smart. We're doing the same thing here. I think Hurricane, um, they're in the process. Uh, if they, they may have already gotten their food license. And I think the commission, uh, like I said, they voted uh, yesterday to approve their executive order to kind of let them operate. So like, like I said, there is a way around it. People have been operating throughout all these state doing this whole food license deal. We're not the, the first city to do it, but um, you know we're definitely on board. So that's a good thing. And, and you, you've, you've kind of navigated this for a while. If there's uh, these guys who are doing the food truck. Are they, I know we had talked about the expense and it was considerable for you to get that. Are they incurring these same expenses? No. So for us, it's a little bit different because, you know, we're, you know, we are looking long-term viability of our business at this point, because, you know, regardless of whether, when, or if we get to open, we have to operate differently now during COVID, you know, um, so for us getting a food truck and the other thing we wanted to do is we wanted to push people outside just to be safer for us to do that here in the city. Um, we have to change laws and changing laws cost money. And that's, that's what it comes down to. So other cities, no, it's not the case. Um, Boynton doesn't have that restrictions. If I was half a quarter of a mile North of Georgia, just North of George Bush, I probably would not be having these issues, but because I'm in the central business district, um, operating with a food truck is a no-no um, unless it's an event. And then outdoor use for bars is a no-no just in general in the city of Delray. And I, I really, I, I got to say, I've never understood that. If, you know, if it, the law's in place, it needs to be changed. You've got a great space. You've got a great outdoor patio area. When I saw your place and we went there with the chamber, I kept telling you, oh man, you're going to mark this thing off. You're going to put a cornhole out yeah. here. It's going to be awesome. And then you were like, yeah, well, the city's really not going to let me do it. And I think this is an example where the city could be proactive and they could be nimble 
you're not in the middle of a residential district. Uh, I know there's a rule basically that bars can't be outside. Yeah, essentially, we, no outdoor use. I think. How you know, does Boston's get away with that? They they have a restaurant. They have a kitchen. So if they're zoned a standalone bar, if you're zoned a standalone bar, there's no outdoor use in the city. No out. No, I forget what the exact legal term is, but there's no outdoor use in the city. Um, if you have a kitchen and you're a restaurant, um, then you're good to go. So yeah, believe it or not, that's just how it is. I think maybe it was back in the day when Delray was planning in probably in the eighties and nineties, they didn't want to be, have that. Um, they wanted to, to, if I had to guess, they wanted their, their downtown shaped a little bit differently. They didn't maybe want it like Hemmershe at Fort Lauderdale or Clematis and West Palm. And maybe that's why that zoning's in there. That's, that's what I'm just guessing. Um, but things are different now, you know, um, you know, we're, most bars, especially new bars and the younger generation, the whole concept of bars is changing from them to more of a laid back space, as opposed to like a place to pack people in and, and, you know, get a little wild. So, uh, you know, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Those, 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 those standards, those regulations are archaic. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I forget who it is who said, you know, uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. I think that's where we're at right now because, Guys like you should be open. Uh, you're not doing anything belligerent. You're not doing anything that takes away from the charm of Atlantic or Delray Beach. Matter of fact, you're bringing more charm because you're moving into that new phase of offering craft beers from all over. You're working with locals. Uh, you're working with you know small businessmen. You're exposing people to different small business craft breweries. Um, you're off a wholesome environment. Um, you know, with the food offerings, food trucks, and with your outdoor space. I've been inside your space, and, you know, you can see the artwork behind you there. Uh, I would have no problem bringing my kid in there and, you know, sit down while we're having a beer. And, and uh, exactly that. The hey, idea of a bar has really changed from what it was in the 70s, where it was, you know, a clandestine place where you kind of went to get out of the sun and smoke Star, bars yeah. and, you know, oh, yeah. trolleys. We, you know, and like I said, we're not really, uh, you know, our concept is German food, uh, German beer hall. If you go to the beer halls in Germany, you're going to see a bunch of 20 to 30 somethings drinking beer. You're going to see people with laptops working. You're going to see uh, families having food and drinks with their kids in strollers. And, and we've really fostered that environment. Um, we were doing it really well. You know, on the weekends, we'd have strollers coming through here. And I think, yeah, putting in, you know, at, at first, the outdoor space was definitely 100%. Um, selfish we know we wanted to grow that business we thought having an, an outdoor beer garden in delray would be perfect but at this point the outdoor space is just it's a must you can't operate during covid outside and what we know about the virus and the aerosol you know be, putting people outside is just going to be safer you know yes. it, it's 100 percent it you know um so yeah no like i said so far i think step one with the city was definitely um was great um, but we still have a lot of work to do and um, we're, we're, we're hoping what we're doing on our end um, with the cities, we're actually rewriting the law that allows the, the commission to do look at each bar on a case by case basis, as opposed to, hey, everyone yes, everyone no, it's going to be like, no, let's look at every bar at a case by case. I'm sorry, my dog is squeaking her toy over here. Taffy. Okay. <laughs> So I'll, I'll fill in the time there because that's what I've been screaming from the mountaintops. And, you know, Billy Himmelrich was just in LA recently and what they've done to kind of pivot, uh, they basically let all the restaurants basically figure out themselves. They're like, listen, you guys can do, you guys can go to the street, you can build out, you don't need permits. You, you know, you just do what you need to do to get open and serve as many people as you can in a safe fashion. And I wish that the city would, would take some of that into consideration because Exactly that, case by case. As you walk around, I, I do it all the time. I'm looking at these restaurants on the app, off the app. I'm like, wow, they can mark that off. Like third and third. They could take, they've got a huge lot across the street that they use for parking. They could easily do an L right outside of their space and make that all outdoor seating. I even heard maybe that some people said they could do it, but they didn't want to do it. Uh, but yeah, case by case. You know, your place is screaming for an outdoor patio there. I mean, it really is. And that's how you keep people safe and you get your small businesses to open. So I'm totally on board with that. I, I really agree with what you're saying. And I know that it's amazing. You're actually trying to change the laws, which can't be cheap. 
um, you know, you're actually trying to change the laws so you can get where you need to get to get open. Well, listen, it, it could be cheap for the multi-million dollar restaurant conglomerates. It's probably a drop in a bucket for them, but for a, a mom and pop, you know, even a small business owner, um, I don't think it's really uh, as as conducive. I was I was kind of surprised, but yeah, it, it's it's what has to get done, you know, in order for us to move forward. Someone always has to to kind of progress. Yeah, you need that trailblazer. Um, and, and you know, like like I said, I, I wish that the, the city would be a little more cooperative and a little more nimble in trying to help uh, guys like you. You know, you're a local guy. You raised your family here. Uh, yeah, no, you, saw, no. you saw this concept in California, if I remember correctly, when we met. Yeah, at the so chamber. my story is like we. I I used to work. Uh, you know, I moved up actually north. I live in Hypoluxo right now. Um, drive down to Boca years ago. And always drive through Delray. I was originally from New York, like most people. Lived in Broward for a long time. Found Delray Beach, and I'm like, you know what? When I stop working for State Farm, I'm gonna open up my own insurance agency in Delray. So I did that. Worked for five, six years, saving money, saving money. We're like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna move to Delray now. We're kind of at the place where my family's growing. I send my kids to Unity, right down the street. And um, you're like, you know, it's time to move to Delray. And then unfortunately, depending on who you talk to, fortunately or unfortunately, if you talk to my wife. Um, I found this concept and I'm like, you know what? Our move can wait a little bit. I think this would be a great business for Delray. I think this would be a great concept for Delray. I think uh, the location that we found is conducive to locals who are kind of sometimes during season, you know, it's tough to get a, a place at a seat from down on Atlantic Avenue. And if you want a place where you're not going to be crowded or, or, um, overwhelmed by tourists, you know, sometimes we, we having that um, I think Matt from Craft Food Tour said it best. The, a lot of the charm that come from these little towns and uh, cities have these little places off the beaten path, like Third and Third, um, like us, like the Sail Inn. You know, it, it's just one of those things that just adds to the charm. And and especially now that I'm going to be closer to two new hotels um, within an industry like craft beer, which is really seeing a renaissance, kind of like wine did in the '90s. Um, I think it just it just a great vibe um, for us in the city. So yeah, no, we 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 want to be part of the city. And like I said, I wouldn't have uh, sacrificed certain things to open up a new concept if I didn't think it would be great for you know my family in the city. No, you got you know you take that risk on, and I agree with you 100%. If you're in Delray Beach and you're not going to sail in and Third and Third and Rose's daughter and Brulee. Right. You're so really missing fun. out on the full Delray Beach experience. And those are all mom and pop restaurants. Those are all small business owners. Each one of them is a great story in and of itself. They are the heartbeat and the soul, Papa's Tapas, Caesar's Ribs, uh, Windy City. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, you know, as a commercial broker, I've been reading a lot of articles with, uh, you know, Chipotle and Domino's have teamed up and they basically have a team of people that go out into these communities and they're looking for spaces that they basically got all this deep diving demographics and data that they can get because they are a large conglomerate. And they basically look into an area and go, wow, we should really put a Chipotle or a Domino's here. And then they put a circle on the, on the map. And then they have their guys run out and talk to every small business restaurant that footprint matches what they want. And they go, hey, man, how you doing? Not so good, huh? Well, how about we go to the landlord? We get you out of your lease. You guys can walk away and we'll come in and take this place over and we'll turn it into a Chipotle and a Domino's. And I know nobody in Delray Beach wants to see that happen, but that's where we're at right now. They, there's armies of people, restaurants that are out there looking for other spaces. And um, we, we've, I, I, I really think locally we need to get proactive to support people like you and to support the sale in. And absolutely, we gotta do it in a safe manner. We gotta open up safely but we need to get our middle-class folks off the sidelines. We need to get them off of unemployment. We need to get everybody back to work again, man. That is the lifeblood of Delray and it's the lifeblood of, of, of our country. No, for sure. That's what we were built on. And you know, fact of the matter is, you know, I, I, I feel as though bars in general just are getting a bad rap. We've peaked. We haven't been open since March and cases rose and rose and rose through July and June without Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach having bars. So it's not that. People are, it's, people are gonna do what they wanna do, responsibly or irresponsibly. It, it's time for us to say, you know what, maybe 
we, we just let everyone open with certain operating procedures and we regulate that way, you know, we police it. You know, I think that's the fair thing to do is say, hey, let's put our funds and our time into policing it. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are out of work that could probably use a job and we could probably pay them just on fines alone. Um, you know, I, I know code enforcement is probably over leveraged, but there, there's are ways we can we can we can operate safely and ways we can get people working and ways we can do this without having to just say, hey, you know what, we just don't like your industry or your industry is an easy target. So therefore, let's let's close you down. Because like I said, not all bars are meant to be packed. Not all bars are spring break bars, you know, and I think that's the mental image people are getting is, you know, we're going to like cocktail, you know, is one of my favorite groups, like, you know, <laughs> go to Tom Cruise packed, packed bar and on a Fridays, exactly. And I feel like that's the mental image that's out there. But, you know, fact of the matter is, I don't even have a bar, I own a bar, but there's no, there's no physical bar in, uh, in, in my space, we're, we're 100% self serve, the data on the self serve actually shows that we're actually possibly even safer, as long as we regulate the amount of people that are pouring beer, because there's less transactions you know there's no bartender touching a beer going to a waiter going to a person this is from spout to beer so a lot of the industry has self-serve like um as almost a step safer than actual going to a legitimate you know a bar with a bartender but you know it, it's one of those weird things where we you know we have we had a great staff and you know we're down to one and a half now um myself and i uh, have one other girl that comes in four times a week just to legit fill cans we, we become what, what would you be staffing right now in a normal situation getting ready to go in season like we are so it would have been like our first season um I, we had um, we had eight or nine people on payroll that's seven people basically that are out of a job right now or that are working somewhere else that you could have had and you could have been supporting them payroll so, paying yeah. taxes on these folks absolutely and and for us you know we were we were profitable in the month of February. So our, our model was working, Ugh. doing well, we we're gonna our, our March was about to blow it through the roof. Um, so I, I know you've been in the industry forever. Uh, my father in law who I lean on for a lot of guidance is in the industry forever. And he was just saying, Hey, you know, I've owned a bunch of restaurants and bars. And for you to be in the green so early is kind of a testament to what you're doing. So yeah, we just we just want to get a shot. Um, I, and well, the, let's let's backtrack. The good thing about this is We've been able to shift our model so much that we didn't do any to-go sales. We now we're doing we're now selling cans, bottles, filling up beers from the taps. That's been good. We're going to keep that um, delivery. We're going to keep that online sales. We're going to keep that. And then our virtual events, our virtual tastings have been quite a success. So I, I think to a degree, as much as COVID sucked, it's pulled us out of our comfort zone and allowed us to add more offerings to what we we're able to do. So. It's, it's such a great point. You know, usually through recessions, that's when companies learn to run meaner and leaner and actually find avenues of commerce where maybe they weren't there before. So on that note, shameless plug time. Tell everybody how to get a hold of you. Uh, I love your virtual beer stuff. I haven't been able to do one yet. It's been too busy, but I've seen them. They look great. So everything you just talked about, how do people get a hold of you? How would they be able to get started on something like that? So best bet is um, you can email us at info at findyourhoppyplace.com. Love it. Uh, Instagram um, and Facebook messaging. It's just the quickest way. You know, we always have our cell phones and we're a lot more proactive to, to responding to a message on Instagram or Facebook. Um, we did just hit 4,000 followers on Instagram and Facebook. So my plan is to do four giveaways. So we, we haven't, you know, we've been open for four months legitimately, and we've got 4,000 followers. Um, so we're going to do four giveaways next week. And we're partnering up with um, probably four different local businesses um, to give away some beer and some of their offerings. So uh, if you're not following us on social media, do it because we're going to be supporting some local businesses here. Um, as well as you'll be able to get maybe a free meal or free events or free beer throughout next week. So that would be the best way. But if anyone has any questions, yeah, we've been doing those virtual um, beer tastings. Um, we've actually kind of slimmed down our offerings to the public with the breweries. And we've been doing a lot of like company beer tastings for company. I was just approached by a university to do a host a virtual beer tasting and trivia for their staff since no one's in schools yet. Um, so we, we can work with you if you need, if you need some virtual events, we become, I always said we were an event driven business that, 
um, happens to serve really cool beer and provide a cool atmosphere. And now we've just taken that event driven business virtual. I love it, man. You know, the one thing, every restaurant I talk to, uh, you guys have such a never say die spirit. You guys keep me positive. Uh, I think you keep the community positive. The fact that you've been able to pivot into different areas, you know, Hey, and drive through, Hey, pick up, Hey, let's do virtual this. You guys just, they're not resting. Um, you, you're an inspiration to everybody, I think in the community. So the bottom line is, uh, Palm beach County is not open. Uh, you know, basically you got to get that food license going, uh, partner up with a, with a, with a food truck, I guess, or something along those lines. What would you recommend right now to the sale ins out there? And all these other guys that are out there. Feel free. You can always reach out to me. Um, if you have any questions, if anyone, you know, reach out to me via social media, I'll shoot you my phone number. Um, we could chat. Uh, it, it, essentially, if you're in a place that allows food trucks or, you know, pop-up food vendors, um, it's a pretty quick fix. If you have a friend that owns a food truck and they want to just change their name on their license and sell you part of their business for a dollar, um, it's a two to three day turnaround to do that. Um, so you could, you could be possibly open within a week. If you decide to do the route that I'm going, um, we're actually, we're going to have a full-time food offering here. At, once we get approved for our food license, we have, a, we partnered up with one of the, the guys at Two Fat Cookies um, and he's creating. Kobe? Uh, no, Kobe. Kobe's too busy, man. Kobe's got <laughs> much fun to say right now. Um, but we are doing a giveaway with Kobe next week. Uh, but uh, we partnered up with Pete. And he started making pretzels and pretzel buns. Ah. Yeah. Um, we've actually partnered up with all the local breweries or a bunch of local breweries. We've been getting spent grain from them, from their brews, and then using that spent grain to create the pretzels and the pretzel buns. We've been using their beers. Well, he's been using their beers to make a uh, uh, whole grain mustard and beer cheese. So we're going to have a food offering. We're probably about another week or two away from getting that food license in here. And we'll have brats, dogs, and pretzels. Well, you, you got to let us know because that sounds absolutely fantastic. It sounds sustainable, which we all love. It's a great collaboration between young entrepreneurs that are, you know, they're, you guys are the future of Delray Beach. You guys really are. And you're one of the reasons why I moved back here after 30 years, graduated high school in the 80s, came back in 2010. And your spirit and your entrepreneurial spirit, and not to mention pretzels with homemade mustard and beer. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, that's going to be I great. So let us know. Fun. We want to help you guys promote that and get the word out there. It sounds absolutely amazing. Last words you want to say to anybody out there that has a business or customers or just any, 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 uh, the floor is yours for the last minute. Uh, one, I want to, John, what, what you've been doing um, for local businesses, um, I just want to say kudos and thanks um, for putting yourself out there um, and, and really just trying to keep people afloat and, and trying to, to give our city some, some hope. I think you're definitely a beacon for that here in the city. Um, and just everyone keep moving, keep moving. Don't stop moving. If you stagnate, you're gonna succumb to this virus, whether it be financially or, or your business is gonna hurt. But just my, my deal is don't stop moving and, and, and you'll be fine. You know, we'll all get through this. Awesome, brother. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out. I've been meaning to do this for a while. It's great to get your story out there. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, looking into what's going on, unfortunately. Uh, you know, we've got some bad news for the county. Anyone, anyone who has any questions to see what we're doing, um, even from a business standpoint or beer standpoint, it's one of these weird things that people think that craft beer is a secret or getting craft beer is a secret or it's exclusive. It's not. It's meant to be consumed by everyone. The more the people that drink great local craft beer, the better it will get. So if anyone has any questions, they want to open up their own craft beer bar, they need craft beer selections, or they just want to know how the hell do I get a food license? Um, give me a call. It's real easy. Thanks so much, John. Take care, man. Have a great weekend. You too.